Well, welcome everyone. My name is John Brenneman. I am the president here at Moa Vacations and I'm joined today by Nicole Hunter with Uniworld Boutique River Cruises. Uh, thank you for joining us. Um, before we get started, uh, I always like to uh, let people know we are recording this. Uh, so we will uh, be emailing everyone a copy of this presentation, uh, most likely this evening, unless we run into any technical difficulties. Uh, we need to download it, edit it, and then upload it to our YouTube channel. Uh, so if you don't receive it this evening, you'll receive it tomorrow. Um, and we are doing a Q&A. Uh, if you'd like to ask questions during the presentation, uh, if you scroll your mouse or your finger, depending on what device you're on or whatever, towards the bottom of the screen, you'll see a little menu pop up. Uh, you'll see the little kind of conversation bubbles. Uh, kind of towards the left side that says uh, actually says Q and A. So uh, if you just want to type your questions in there uh, during uh, Nicole's presentation, I will be answering questions. Uh, if it is something I think that uh, the other attendees or the other viewers will be interested in, um, I may answer it in Q and A, but then bring it up uh, at the end. Uh, when we do the live q a as well so any questions feel free to ask them we're here to make sure that uh, all your questions are answered so uh before i turn it over to nicole i just had a couple things uh i wanted to talk about uh i think most everybody who signed up today has been to a previous webinar so i'm gonna kind of go through the first section a little kind of quickly a uh, superior service um we are and continue to be the only travel agency to provide travel uh, on a satisfaction guaranteed basis uh, we're here to make sure that your vacation is as fun as possible. Uh, if you ever have any concerns, questions, problems, um, is there something you want that the travel consultant you're working with can't provide, uh, myself or Mike Tyrell, our vice president, are happy to jump in and get that resolved. Uh, we do guarantee the lowest prices. In addition to that, we do have a free amenity program. Uh, Uniworld uh, is one of our uh, preferred partners. They do participate in the amenity program. Uh, we actually have a change uh, that we're going to do that. It's not, it doesn't take place till the next, the next year. Uh, but this year, if you book any 2024 uh, Uniworld cruise, you get $100 per person uh, shipboard credit. Um, Nicole's going to talk in a little bit, and you'll see that almost everything on board the cruise is included. Uh, so kind of from some feedback that we've had to from some members who've gone on Uniworld in the past, we're actually going to change that uh, in 2025. And instead of a $100 per person shipboard credit, um, the MOA exclusive amenity uh, 2025 and going forward is going to be an additional $100 off per person. Um, so we're kind of excited about that change. Uh, appreciate Nicole and her team working with us to get that change made. Um, we are going to talk about, uh, I'm going to get to groups in just a second, but when we get to the groups, um, we are going to talk about some of our signature groups, our cruise for the cause. Um, those already have negotiated discounts in them, uh, already have shipboard credits. Uh, so when we talk about the signature groups, and we'll get to a list of those in a second, all of those actually have $150 per person uh, shipboard credit. Um, and then the cruise for the cause in 2025 uh was actually set up uh, prior to the change. So it will also have $150 per person shipboard credit. Uh, but we'll talk about that a little bit more uh, in a little bit. And so groups, we do do groups. Um, we can do a group for your chapter. We can do a group for your family. We can do a group for your friends. Um, but one of the things we're going to talk about today is the uh, MOA group departures uh, and kind of what makes those exclusive. And one more thing I wanted to mention and kind of go back when we're talking about the guaranteed lowest price, the service, those MOA exclusive amenities, and I know a lot of you probably heard me say this before, but those apply to you and anyone traveling with you. Uh, and there isn't a limit on it. So, you know, we talk about groups. If you put a group of friends together, uh, or let's say that it's uh, your local chapter or maybe some other military organization you belong to or family, whatever it is, be it if you bring one person, two cabins, 20 cabins, um, since they are traveling with you and you're a MOA member, they would all receive that MOA exclusive amenity, the lowest price guarantee, uh, and our service a guarantee. So that applies to you and everyone who travels with you, and there is no cap on that number. Okay, so the signature groups, um, a couple of things. I always like to say the signature groups are sort of like a group on steroids. So if you uh, 
kind of look at what's included with the normal group. You're talking about uh, additional amenities, um, negotiated lower prices, um, all of those other types of things comes with the signature groups uh, and our uh, cruise with the cause um, actually have additional things. The first uh, of which, um, which actually is one of the most popular benefits, although a lot of people I don't think think of it to begin with, uh, is they're actually hosted by MOA leadership and staff, and they are on board. And they are on board for a couple of reasons. So one way I normally talk about is they're there to ensure that you have a stress-free vacation. But the other thing is, is it's your opportunity actually to interact with the executives, the top leadership at MOA, um, and talk to them one-on-one -on -one um, share your ideas, ask them what the what MOA is working on going in the future. Um, we've actually in the past sometimes when there was enough interest actually put together little presentations, Q&A. Um, it's an opportunity for you to literally just talk to the, the association leadership uh, and, and get like an inside peek at what's going on uh, in Alexandria. Um, they are all inclusive. Um, I mentioned this already, um, when uh, Nicole kind of goes through Uniworld, uh, you'll see that basically um, the Uniworld cruises are almost from the moment your airplane lands, um, and for example, let's say you're doing Paris and Normandy, so when, as soon as your plane lands in Paris, your vacation begins, and literally everything's included, you wouldn't have to spend any additional money uh, for the entire your vacation, you're picked up at the airport, you're taken to the ship, everything on board the ship's included, um, and we'll get to more on that in a minute, but they're kind of designed so they're kind of um, the price that you see is the price for everything. Um, uh, exclusive onboard events and excursions, uh, that's kind of going to vary by the the um, by the itinerary or the, the group that we're talking about. We always have a welcome reception uh, and a farewell reception opportunity to, you know, at the, the, the welcome reception to meet uh, everyone that uh, you're traveling with. Um, and then farewell reception, opportunity to say goodbye to, to all the friends that you met on board. Um, I talked about bringing friends and family. Friends and family are invited to come with you on the signature groups. I think every signature group we have, somebody brings um, a, a, a child, a grandchild, friends, uh, siblings, whatever that may be. So once again, we're here to make sure your vacation is as enjoyable as possible. Uh, if you'd have more fun, if your neighbor went, uh, if your if your kids went, you know, if your friends went, feel free to invite them along. Everything we offer MOA members are invited to are, are offered to MOA member guests as well, and they are rare opportunities. Um, we used to only do two a year. We're kind of in a thing now. They've proved so popular. Um, it looks like we're kind of doing three a year now. But that's three departures a year for 360,000 members. So they really are rare opportunities. Okay, so um, here's a list of the signature groups uh, that we have and the uh, cruise for the cause that we have. And this is just the ones we have with Uniworld. Um, we have done more signature groups with Uniworld than any other company. In fact, they are our go-to for river cruises. Um, we use other companies for the ocean cruises and for the land tours, uh, but... The ratings we get from Uniworld are, are off the charts, so we we stick with them because they do such a fantastic job. So we have Paris and Normandy. Um, we actually have two departures, uh, June 2nd and 9th. I think the last time we talked, that was sold out. We've actually had a couple of cancellations. I think we have three or four staterooms available. Um, we do have June 9th. We do have maybe eight, nine cabins available on that one. Um, and we're going to go through these. Um, Nicole's going to kind of go through them and kind of give you a day-to-day. -day. Uh, Venice and the Jewels, Veneto, uh, Daniel Holiday Markets, and then Burgundy Provence, um, which is kind of unique. It's not actually a signature group. It is actually a fundraiser um, for MOA charities. Um, the MOA Foundation and MOA Charities, um, are actually a donation is made uh, to them uh, for the cruise. You're not asked for a donation. You still get a discounted price. No one's going to hit you up. Uh, for donations on the site that's actually printed uh, on the website. If you go to the next slide, Nicole, we actually have websites set up for all of these. This is actually a, a screenshot of the homepage for Paris and Normandy. We have done individual webinars uh, on these, uh, a lot of these. So if you go to the Paris and Normandy website, you can actually watch a webinar, which is specifically on that departure. Uh, you can kind of see it across the top, the tabs that we have. Um, the homepage, uh, you can't scroll down because it's a screenshot, kind of a general description, pricing and accommodations, the day-by-day -day itinerary, 
uh, everything that's included, terms and conditions, and a book now form. Uh, and then finally, the last thing I wanted to show about this, this is just a screenshot. Uh, if you remember the tab that said pricing and accommodations, um, there is a page that shows the pricing of all the different categories. This is actually the June 2nd uh, departure. As you can see, there are, I guess, four and a half staterooms available. I'll get to that in just a second. Um, but we have, uh, this is the deck plan. And then if you look at the stop signs or the red octagons or whatever you want to call them, those are all the cabins that are sold. So as you can see, um, there's not a lot of space left on June 2nd. If we were to pull up the screenshot of June 9th, um, it has maybe twice as many staterooms available. Once again, very few left. Um, and it's important to note, all of those staterooms are occupied by MOA members and MOA guests. So one of the fantastic things about these signature groups is when you get on board, everyone you meet is a MOA member or MOA guest. So it is literally, uh, and I know I've used this term a lot, but it's the best way I can describe it. Everybody you meet um, is basically just a friend you've never met before. Um, there's that instant camaraderie with everyone. Uh, it really makes uh, for a much more enjoyable cruise. So um, as I mentioned, we have uh, websites for all the signature groups when we get into those, but that's kind of just, I kind of wanted to do a quick kind of overview on that. And now I'm going to turn it over to Nicole. Nicole's going to talk to us more about Uniworld for those of you who aren't familiar with them. So you kind of know the product. Um, what makes them unique? Why MOA members choose uh, Uniworld more than any other river cruise line? Uh, and then we're going to kind of go into those. Uh, there's there's five MOA groups. Obviously, there's only four itineraries because we have two for Paris and Normandy. So we're going to kind of go through those uh, four itineraries. Um, but I just want you to keep in mind when we go through these, we book MOA members on Uniworld either on their own or in their own groups or on the MOA signature groups. So if we go through, for example, and let's say that Nicole goes through and she talks about uh, Venice and Venita and the jewels of Venita, and you can't go in September or there's another time you want to go, you certainly can go on a different date. You can do Paris and Normandy later this year or next year if that's when you want to go. So all of these um, are available all the time. And Uniworld goes, has destinations around the globe. And I know Nicole's going to talk on that, but we literally have a uh, special savings opportunity. We talked about the MOA exclusive amenity, the guaranteed lowest price. So it's kind of when she goes through the first part and talks about Uniworld, keep in mind that if you want to go to Egypt or you want to go, you know, on the Danube or, um, you know, any of these other itineraries, those are available as well. Uh, and we do have savings opportunities for you. So Nicole, I know that's longer than my normal uh, kind of <laughs> intro, but I, I thought I had, I just really kind of wanted to go over that. Uh, so I'm going to turn it over to Nicole. Nicole's going to talk to us. Uh, for a little bit, as I mentioned, if you have any questions, just ask them in the q and A. I'm going to turn my camera off. I'm going to be answering questions through her presentation. When she gets done, I'll hop back on and we'll answer all of your questions at that time. So, Nicole, take it away. Thanks so much, John. And thanks to everybody for joining me today. I really appreciate uh, you coming on and, and learning about um, these upcoming groups that we have Um as John mentioned, my name is Nicole Hunter, and I am with Uniworld Boutique River Cruises. I have had the pleasure of sailing about 20 times, and I've sailed on all of the itineraries that we're going to talk about today, um, some of them more than once. So I certainly can assist you uh, with questions about the itinerary. Um, just a little background on Uniworld and who we are. We've been in uh, business and sailing and river cruising um, for decades now. I think we're getting close to 50 years, if I remember correctly. Um, and our concept is just making you feel like you're in the destination, um, that when you step on board our ship, you haven't left the shore, that uh, you still look and feel when you're on our ship's um, just like staying at a small boutique hotel. And um, we really do that well um, throughout all of our ships and the uh, MOA signature groups that have been chosen. Those ships are just amazing. I've seen them and they're real stunners. So uh, you will be amazed from the moment you walk on board with Uniworld. So why Uniworld? Um, we are the most all-inclusive uh, river cruise line out there. Um, and that really, it speaks to what John mentioned earlier of having everything included and not really having to worry um, about, you know, what that end cost is of your, your trip with us. So, of course, we have outstanding service. Um, that is one thing that I think that um, we do better probably than any other river cruise line out there is um, invest in our employees who serve 
you while you're sailing with us and ensure that um, they are there giving you the very best in service on our one of a kind award winning ships. Um, and like I mentioned at the very beginning, you're going to walk onto our ships and just be dazzled with uh, their beauty. We, of course, have our, our farm to table cuisine and our carefully curated experiences, which I'm going to go over experiences when we talk about each of the itineraries. These are just some of the pillars that really make Uniworld stand out. Um, when we talk about all inclusiveness and what that looks like with Uniworld, um, your unlimited choice of premium spirits and wines with us. Um, and that really means anything from, you know, your cocktails to your wine to your beer. Um, I'm a I'm a uh, vodka tonic girl, and so I love Grey Goose, so Grey Goose is included. Um, so if you have a specialty liqueur, uh, many of those are included with us. Of course, masterfully prepared fine dining with us. Um, I like to tell people it's like dining at a five-star restaurant every single night on your cruise. Um, and you'll be amazed by um, how many entree choices you have and just how delicious um, our chefs have worked to make the entree choices um, kind of fit the itinerary in which you're in. Um, of course, your airport transfers are included on embarkation and debarkation days with us. So as long as you're kind of falling into our guidelines for airport transfers, um, those are included with us. So no additional charge there. Tipping is included uh, while on board to all of our staff. So there's no kind of this is a suggested amount at the end of your cruise that we're going to tell you um, because it's included. So that's really nice. Um, of course, every single day you're going to have excursions to choose from um, that are included. And then there'll be some additional excursions that if you wanted to kind of go above and beyond the included, you certainly could. Uh, we do have ship-wide internet and Wi-Fi access throughout the ship um, in the common areas, in your um, cabin. Um, so you can stay as connected as you want to during vacation. Some people don't want to stay so connected, and I get that. Um, we, of course, have wellness opportunities, uh, whether it is yoga up on the top deck or going for a bicycle ride or going for a hike to um, an activity, an excursion um, versus um, a, a walk. Um, we have many things that can keep you in shape and you might need it with all that wonderful cooking that we do. We, of course, have onboard entertainment um, that will bring on some nights. It's just dancing in our lounges. Um, other nights, it's bringing on a special guest singer or entertainment or something. Um, and so that is, um, of course, a way to kick up your heels after dinner and, and stay up all night if you'd like. Um, and, and we do have our in-suite butler service, which is for our suite guests only. Um, and our, our butlers, um, our wonderful butlers who have gone through some training programs um, that um, are really could be serving the, the royals of uh, royalty out there. Um, and we do have our in-room pampering that uh, you can enjoy, our, our robes, our slippers, our spree body products. Um, I just got off of one of our ships about a week ago, and the heated floors were so nice, and heated towel rack, um, and so it was really quite lovely. You get definitely pampered when you are sailing uh, with Uniworld. Um, as I mentioned at the very beginning, each of our ships are one of a kind. So there's nothing cookie cutter about them. We make the we build our ships so that they look like the destination in which they're sailing in, and we don't move them. So if I've got the Joie de Vie up in Paris, um, she looks very Parisian. We're going to talk about her in a minute. Um, but we don't move her to any other river. She stays there because she's built for that river to look and feel um, just like that river. Um, as I mentioned, the most personal service, here's one of our fabulous butlers, um, and the butlers really are um, very tenured. The one thing that I see over and over when I see guest surveys at the end of their cruise is about the service, and I think that we really excel in delivering five-star service when you're traveling with us. 
Um, as far as meals, um, it is delicious. It is farm to table cuisine. Um, it is like eating a piece of artwork almost every night. I will tell you that breakfast and lunch are um, buffets and they are not your typical, you know, just standard buffet. They are over the top. What our chefs do, you will be dazzled and will not uh, leave the ship hungry. Um, and then at night, we have entree choices to choose from. So there will always be something that is um, kind of for that day, for that region in which we're in. So I, I'd love to give the example, because Paris is so simple to give, um, mussels and frits. That is a very French kind of thing. And so we have that one night. Um, I personally love mussels. My husband does not. And so he can choose from another entree choice. So every night there's multiple entree choices. I'd say anywhere between like three or four entree choices. There's always a vegetarian dish um, for those out there. And then of course you can work um, with John and his team um, if you have any kind of dietary needs. As long as we kind of know before you get on board so that our chefs can prepare, um, we really can help with just about any kind of uh, dietary need. Kosher meals is one we don't have a kosher kitchen, but we can bring on meals um, if you do need that. It just would be a different kind of dining experience. As far as our all included drinks, as I mentioned, wine um, is local for the region in which we're in. Um, usually, sometimes wine from wineries that day. Um, so when we're in France, we're going to drink French wines. When we're in Italy, we're going to drink Italian wines. Um, it makes sense. Our beers will be regional. And then, of course, we've got our premium liqueurs, your Grey Goose, your Bombay Sapphire, your Maker's Mark, your Remy Martin. Um, you will not leave our ships thirsty ever. Um, enjoy it. Um, we are all-inclusive when it comes to drinks 24 7 um, as far as stepping off of our ships, we do keep your groups into much smaller groups than anyone else out there. And that really is so that you guys can ask questions, so that you can take a photograph with not a lot of other people in it, um, that you can um, kind of get some exclusive experiences. Uh, we go into um, St. Mark's Basilica, um, just Uniworld. Um, when we we're in Venice, when we were in Milan, we went into um, and see the Last Supper by ourselves. And so we really try as a company to ensure that um, we are in smaller groups. Again, so you can you can get in there, ask the questions and hear and um, really feel very special when you're off um, exploring all of our excursions with us. So let's go ahead and look at some of these itineraries. Um, I've got several to cover today. The very first departure is June 2nd, um, followed by June 9th, and this is for our Paris and Normandy. And so with these two sailings for Paris and Normandy uh, this June, June 2nd and June 9th, the June 2nd sailing has just a few cabins available, as John mentioned um, at the beginning, because there's just a, a handful of cabins. Um, June 9th is really what I'm going to focus on in this presentation because it has more availability um, and we'll be back to our standard program with the Normandy visit being on Thursday. Um, so when I cover this this presentation today, I'll really be highlighting the June 9th sailing um, uh, because of the availability. I just want to make you aware that there is a difference between the two sailings as to when it comes to the day we visit Normandy. So let's take a look at this. Um, the Joie de Vivre. Um, she stands for the joy of life and she is so joyful, so Parisian, um, really reflecting 20th century Paris. And um, I think you're going to love her. She is not that old. Um, she was just inaugurated in 2017. Um, and we go in and gussy her up over the winter months. Um, to make sure she looks just as fabulous as when she was inaugurated. Um, she only holds 128 guests. So um, John showed you kind of the ship schematic there of uh, the three um, the fleet, three floors of, of cabins. So we have a classic, a French balcony, a deluxe French balcony, suites, and then our grand suites. So as you can see from these pictures, she does really reflect um, kind of that... Um, 
uh, joy of life of living in Paris. Um, and I think when you get on board her, you're really going to love her. So we have seven nights cruising, 19 meals, um, six excursions, and one UNESCO World Heritage Site. So um, here's kind of just a glance um, of the itinerary as um, on our standard departure of um, Paris, round trip Paris. So we sail out of Paris and we sail back into Paris on day eight. So day one is our embarkation day. And this is the day where you will arrive into Charles de Gaulle Airport. Um, and we will help you um, once you gather your luggage and come through um, to where transfers are. Uh, we'll help you get that luggage onto our, our coach and we'll get you to the ship as, as quickly as possible um, for you to get on board. Um, most people from the United States arrive really early in the morning on all these departures. And so um, because we are turning our ship early that morning, uh, your cabin won't probably be available until early afternoon, but we will get you in as quickly into your cabin so you can get settled. I try to tell people, you know, come on board, enjoy our restaurants. It will have some snacks in there. We'll have lunch in there as soon as possible. Um, all inclusive drinks, all of that happen. Go up on the top deck, get some fresh air. You've been tr probably traveling all night. Uh, maybe take a nap on our sun deck. Um, just don't sleep a lot because you need to get adjusted um, to the new time change. So that's day one. It's a very light day because you all are traveling um, from the United States. So day two. Um, this is a wonderful day. Uh, we've sailed the Seine and uh, stopped in Giverny, um, where we'll have the opportunity to visit Claude Monet's home and gardens um, and walk about his estate to see its beauty and what inspired his paintings. Um, and this is just really a beautiful day, um, any day of the year, um, because his gardens are amazing. Um, the flowers are in bloom. You'll go into his house um, and see some of the artwork hanging on the walls and such. There is also an after, um, an opportunity for you to do our let's go bike ride um, through the French countryside. And we have that throughout many of our sailings. And it's just an opportunity for those who want to be more active to be more active and, and get a little bike ride in. And it's certainly this particular day um, through the French countryside. It's a beautiful day to do that bike ride. So I encourage it to people. Um, and then we'll probably have our welcome dinner uh, this night, uh, night number two. So this is a night where our chef will prepare a really uh, lavish uh, dinner for you all and really welcome you on board. Day three, as we continue up the Seine, is Rhone. Um, and we'll walk the Dukes of Normandy capital of Rhone. Um, and the cobblestone streets you see in this picture, it's just lovely. The architecture um, takes you back to the days of Joan of Arc, Richard the Lionheart. And of course, this was home to Claude Monet also. So he lived here in addition. And um, I remember just strolling these streets and I, you know, it, it just takes you back to a much simpler time. Um, and it's just fun to grab a seat somewhere and, and people watch as uh, guests are coming through, um, tourists and also the locals and, and, and how, they, how they interact. Um, it's a fun day in Rome. So day four, um, Han Fleur or Etretat. Um, Han Fleur is a beautiful seaside harbor town, as you see here in this picture. Um, and it's got wonderful seafood restaurants. I mean, if you're a seafood lover, this is the day where you might want to grab lunch at your own expense um, at one of these wonderful uh, little seafood restaurants. It's incredibly fresh. Um, and there's an older uh, village there um, that they've kept intact for you to um, go and enjoy. We also have on this day, Etretat. And um, if anybody is up for golfing, um, come and join. Um, I think we have a handful of tea times and um, John and his team will be taking um, reservations for golf and, um, and getting that. But this particular um, 
golf course is voted the best in all of France. And so that's really um, quite a thing to brag about when you get back home. You, you, uh, you golfed at the best in France of golf courses. So um, we will uh, get you set up for a game of golf if you have interest in that. Um, day five is um, on, on the second itinerary is the Normandy beaches. And today will be a day of remembrance, obviously, as we visit the beaches of Normandy. Um, we will visit the American Cemetery and have a wreath laying ceremony. Um, and this will be a full day excursion for, for you. So plan on being gone from the ship for the entire day. Obviously, the ship doesn't get up in towards uh, the beaches or the cemetery up there. Um, and I remember this day as just being one of those days that um, was about remembrance. My father is retired Air Force and uh, they did a little dedication to retired and current uh, military. And and I just remember being so very proud of, of my dad there. Um, we will have the opportunity to visit um, some of uh, the different beaches while we're um, there up into Normandy. Day six is Versailles. And Versailles is um, so opulent. And um, we have an opportunity where we've bypassed the lines to get in. Um, as you know, it's a lavish palace built by the Sun King. Um, but we bypass the lines, but we also go into the private quarters and the chapel, which is not what normal guests do. And so um, we'll get some behind the scenes um, uh, exploring at Versailles that most guests just don't even know exists. They think when they go into Versailles that they're seeing everything and, um, and they're not. Um, so we get you behind the scenes, but you also get the opportunity for a little bit of free time to explore the gardens. Um, I'm sure many of you have heard of the gardens of Versailles um, and uh, to just enjoy some free time walking around. So that is uh, day six. And day seven, we are back in Paris. Um, and we have a lot that you can do this day. Um, we have got um, a city tour that you can do. We've got the Heart of Paris Seine River Cruise. You can, um, if you've never been to Paris, I would tell you to do um, you know, a city tour with us. Um, if you have been to Paris, maybe you just wanna go off and explore on your own or take one of our bicycles, which are complimentary and um, go off and, and enjoy the city um, at your own pace. That's certainly okay. Um, I would tell you that um, going to the Eiffel Tower is a must. Um, I love going to the Eiffel Tower at night uh, when it's all lit up and uh, glistening and it's just a beautiful sight to be seen. You can go pretty far up on the Eiffel Tower and get some fantastic panoramic views. Um, there's so much to see and do in Paris. Uh, one day is not enough to explore the city, um, but sadly, uh, day eight, we disembark. So um, when we're in Paris, we will um, also have one of our farewell dinners. So we do have disembarkation on uh, day eight of the ship. And this is where we will say goodbye to you, au revoir, and transfer you back to the ship. Or some of you may have chosen to go ahead and do an extension. And um, that's certainly fine too. We have a lot of people who like to stay a little bit longer and we understand that. So that was the Paris and Normandy itinerary as, as quickly as I could get through it since there's, since there's so many today to cover. We do have then um, Venice. And this is a wonderful one. I love that MOA has chosen September because it is a lovely time to go. Um, this is September 8th to the 15th, um, starting price uh, from $33.99 per person. And um, when I when I look at this picture, this is what you see. I mean, it's just, it's an amazing picture here of Venice. And um, I love this itinerary. It's, um, it, it takes you, I think most people go to Venice on a big ocean liner and we do it a different way. We're the only ones um, docked right in Venice. Um, so it's just a stone's throw of a walk for you. Um, and uh, you see so much of more of Venice and the Isles of Venice. So let's take a look at this itinerary. Um, we have got the SS La Venencia, 
we transformed her, which means she went through um, a major, a major facelift, if you will. We gussied her up. We took her down to her core and rebuilt her um, just in 2020. So she still is a very brand new ship um, for us. And she holds just 128 guests. And we're very well known for our high staff to guest ratio. So when you look at 42 staff for just 126 guests, um, imagine the service that you're going to receive on her. Um, she is a beautiful ship. Again, another ship that looks very much like the destination. So we've gone in, made her look like you're in a wonderful boutique hotel in Venice. Um, and uh, she's got some wonderful little uh, spots to hang out in. She's got that little dining room down at the bottom, uh, right, if you will, um, where you can do a cooking class with us if you choose to. And there's nothing better than learning cooking uh, in Italy. We do sail seven nights, 20 meals, six days of excursions, and three UNESCO World Heritage Sites. So let's take a look um, at this itinerary here. My husband and I did this little gondola experience, and it just was so lovely. Um, we were with a group, and they were going to put four of us on a, on a gondola. And I was like, no, I just want my husband and I. Um, so that could be me right there in that little lagoon area. But we've got eight days. Um, we embark and disembark in Venice. So day one is you arrive into the Marco Polo uh, Airport and you will be transferred to the ship. And um, just like uh, Paris and Normandy that I talked about and all itineraries that I'll talk about, day one, we get you in probably into your cabin mid-afternoon um, so that you can unpack and it's just kind of a relaxing day. Day two, um, we have an early morning arrival into Doge's Palace. Um, and this is where we will visit the palace. And um, in, uh, in private without any crowds. So it's just us Uniworld um, guests enjoying the gilded gold ceilings. Um, it's a wonderful um, palace to kind of start your very first day of touring in Venice. Um, we have got then that evening in St. Mark's Basilica. In St. Mark's Basilica, we do a private after hours visit. And if you've ever been to Venice, you know that to get into St. Mark's Basilica, there is usually a massive line to get in there. We have chosen to rent out St. Mark's Basilica for just Uniworld guests. So just those 120 guests or so uh, that are with us that week will get in. Um, and there, so we bypass any kind of line there and we go in and we see this beautiful basilica. We learn about the basilica and her history. Um, we see her the jewels of the basilica, there's the catacombs, um, and we have a local guide there that really brings the basilica to life with all of her glory. So this is a, a, a uh, excursion you must not miss. Um, I always get surprised when somebody says, oh, I just chose not to. I'm like, oh, wait, that was like the highlight. I, for me, when I was um, in Venice, I loved going to St. Mark's Basilica on my own. Um, day three, we are in Burano or Morocco. Mazarbo. Um, and we're going to do um, this day also a Venice walk and a and meet with a gondola artisan. And so that's really neat to, to learn about um, how those gondolas were built, how much they cost to build now, because they, they are quite expensive. Um, and then we have our evening stroll in Burano. And um, we will also visit Vicenza <laughs> uh, Teatro Olimpico. So that is the first, it's hard to say for me, uh, first indoor theater made of uh, wood, stucco, plaster, way back in uh, 1585 uh, for theater and musical productions. So um, a really neat um, opportunity for you to go and see that first indoor theater. Um, I won't. I won't pronounce the name again because I hate to butcher stuff. <laughs> um, so day four, the island of Burano. I loved the island of Burano. Burano is an old seaside um, island that every little house there um, is different colors. And we're talking really bright oranges and purples and pinks and yellows. And um, the reason that these homes are brightly colored is because the fishermen at night 
could not tell which home was theirs as they were coming back with their fish for the day. And so uh, they decided to paint their homes very bright colors so that they could figure out which home to walk into. I don't have that problem where I live and that's good, um, but it really is, Verano is just a really neat island where there's lots of lace shops, restaurants, um, shops in general, ladies for shopping if you'd like to do. Um, we also have a glass blowing demonstration, a Murano glass blowing demonstration. And I would say to you that um, this is the place to get a piece of Murano glass. When they take you there, um, there is an opportunity to purchase and I definitely would. It is the best of the best that I have seen. We also have the island of Tor Torchetto. Um, which is a very first settlement in the Venetian Lagoon. So that is quite neat to, to go through um, that uh, area also. Day five is Chioja. And Chioja is right on the coast. Um, it's very, very picturesque. Um, there are several options that day. There is the market of Chioja, which I did. I also did the Let's Go Biking Chioja. Um, and so there's others, as you see here, there's the noble country villas and their wines. Um, and so there's many opportunities on this day to do. I will tell you the bike ride that I did was not a difficult bike ride. Um, so do know that it was, uh, there were no hills or anything. Um, it's just a nice way to get a little bit of extra ac activity in your day. Um, but it's nice to go to Chioja because it just really is very, um, quaint and small and you just see the locals there, um, living their life at the market, going and buying the spices and the fruits and the vegetables and the meats and the cheeses and stuff, um, the pastas, and it's a great, um, a great little stop on day five. Day uh, six, um, this is a wonderful day where we just kind of are sailing past the islands on the Po Delta sailing. And so this is where you kind of get acclimated as to where you are and where these islands are that you're off visiting. So we're not obviously just staying in Venice. We're getting off to the Isles of Venice. And that's um, a lot of what this um, itinerary is. This is such a quaint itinerary, I think. Um, and uh, we get to see where the Po River meets this, the Adriatic Sea. And so um, it's a beautiful day of just sitting up on our top deck having a spritzer and enjoying the views as we sail, um, as we sail past the many aisles. Day seven, we are back in Venice and um, you can hop into your taxi ride, uh, which is so very posh um, in Venice. I, um, I always think of that as being one of uh, the most posh things to do. Um, and uh, there's a lot of options today. You can do, do as the locals do, a Venice walking tour. You can go and definitely should go to the Rialto walking tour. Uh, you can go and learn about the Venetian masks that you see and, and even purchase one. Um, it is amazing to go by the mask shops. Um, there's plenty of them uh, to, 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 look at and like i said you could even purchase just remember you've got to get it home so that's important um but it is a lovely day just spent in venice um you also can do your own free time and do like my husband and i did and go off and do the uh, gondola ride if you if you'd like Day eight, we are disembarking the ship and we are saying goodbye to you um, in Venice as you head home uh, through the Marco Polo International Airport, or if you have chosen to extend, um, that is also definitely an option. I will now move on to December. It seems like we just got through December, um, but this is coming up real quick. So December 9th to the 16th, um, starting price from $36.99 per person. And this is the Danube Holiday Markets. And I have done the Danube River many a times um, for Christmas markets, and I love the Danube River. Um, it is by far, um, I think, the better of the rivers just because of the markets and all their glory and everything. So I think it's so great that uh, you guys have chosen um, to do the Danube Holiday Market on the SS Maria Teresa. The SS Maria Teresa is a floating castle, if you will. Um, we make her look like uh, Maria Teresa's summer palace uh, in Vienna. 
And when you go to Vienna, um, you're going to get back on your ship and go, oh, I'm on her floating palace this week. So uh, we've got this wonderful portrait of her. Um, we have gone through and done some amazing hand-painted murals. And of course, we gussy her up for the holidays. We make sure that we go in and we've got the garland and we've got the glue vine and we've got a Christmas tree and um, things to just get you very much in the mood of Christmas. Um, this ship was inaugurated in 2015. She has not undergone any kind of transformation because she, uh, we got to see her up every winter when we don't have guests on her. Um, and she really doesn't need anything. I've seen her recently um, and she's beautiful. She is our highest ranked ship. So I just learned that um, a couple of weeks ago as far as um, our ship uh, reviews. So she really is quite beautiful, but she is a floating palace. So 150 guests, so a few more than some of the other ships I've talked about and 58 staff um, on board. So we have got uh, seven nights of cruising, 20 meals, 12 excursions, four UNESCO World Heritage sites. So let's take a look. Um, we embark this one on in Passau and we sail down the Danube River to Budapest. Um, I think this is a lovely itinerary because it gets you into Salzburg. You get um, Bratislava. Um, there's many options, Vienna, um, that you're going to see. And so there's a lot of really good stops along um, along this itinerary. Day one is embarkation into uh, Passau. So arrive into Munich's airport and we transfer you to the ship. If you arrive on day of embarkation, um, we'll meet you like we do all of the other cruises I've talked about today. Day two is Passau. Passau is very interesting because this is where the three rivers meet, is in Passau. Um, so I think that that's kind of a, a neat little trivia question. Um, and we head off to our first Christmas market. And this Christmas market is quite, is quite large. It's got 70 stalls to explore. Um, and I have to say, going to Christmas markets is really lovely because it brings people from around the world into these wonderful European Christmas markets. And so you're gonna hear many different languages and such, and you can um, go and taste the foods and shop at all the different um, stalls and stuff. Um, there's a lot of shopping that can be had this week, um, but this is a very large um, Christmas market with um, with 70 stalls here. So um, a lot of people love to drink the warmed glue vine, which is a warm wine, if you will. Um, and I love to go and taste all the little treats from the different vendors uh, that they have. Day three is Linz, but we transfer, if you'd like, up to Salzburg. And I would tell you to go to Salzburg, uh, the birthplace of Mozart, but in my own history, the sound of music, right? That's what I think of uh, when I think of Salzburg, the hills being alive with the sound of music. It really is um, one of those um, cities that just engulfs you and probably stays with you for the rest of your life. Salzburg is just simply gorgeous. Um, there are many tinier little um, holiday markets to explore just in the town of Salzburg. You kind of can go from one to another to another. Um, it's not like they're all in one central place. And so I think that that's quite neat. Um, even the McDonald's sign um, has got to live up to the standards and architectural look of Salzburg. So um, take a look at the McDonald's sign when you're over there. But it really is um, one of my very, very favorite places in all of Europe to visit is Salzburg. So I wish I were going with you. Day four is um, a Krems and a visit with spiced wine tasting. Um, so if you haven't done it yet as of day four, um, this is the day to try it. Uh, we also have got an organ concert at a monastery, uh, which is uh, going to be a really memorable experience. You see the horse and carriage ride. You can hop on one of those at your expense and enjoy a little um, horse and carriage ride through the, the streets of Krems. Um, it's a beautiful thing to do while you're over there uh, to just feel um, so special trotting around uh, the markets and the, the little city of Krems. Day five, Vienna. I love Vienna. Uh, Vienna, um, we will have a walking tour 
and a visit to the Vienna Art History Museum. We're going to have special access to that um, and see the extraordinary art collection that that is there. And of course, in Vienna, um, this is a time where we'll do a city tour also, but you also and and go to some of the Christmas markets, but you also have some exploring to do on your own. So um, this is a long day in Vienna. And I think um, a really nice uh, uh, city to visit probably in my top five cities in all of Europe, I think, uh, is Vienna. So Day six is another country. So we're in Bratislava. And this particular itinerary does go through multiple countries, um, but not many people get to Bratislava. And so uh, we are gonna get to Bratislava. We're gonna do a local walking tour as we head towards their Christmas market, which dates back only to 1993. So it's not a very old Christmas market. It seems as though they just kind of were like, okay, you know, everybody else in Europe is doing these Christmas markets. Let's do something uh, here in Bratislava. And so um, I think that that's neat to see the different countries and what Christmas markets are in those countries. So um, this will be a another day for you to remember. And again, another country to mark off. And then we have finally arrived into Budapest. Um, two options for today um, are going to be the Christmas markets and the do is the locals do walking tour with Christmas markets. And Buddha and Pesh um, have their own distinctive um, uh, qualities to them. And I would tell you, you know, go and visit Buddha, which is on one side of the river, and Pesh on the other side. Um, there's amazing things to explore when we're there. Um, and I think you'll really love Buddha Pesh. This would be a good opportunity to, for you to stay a couple nights longer and uh, enjoy a little bit more of Buddha Pesh. They, they have um, lots of art museums. They have got... Um, some wonderful Roman baths, if you will. Um, and of course, since you're over there during Christmas markets, the wonderful Christmas markets. And then day eight, we are disembarking. We've come to the end of this tour also um, and uh, transferring you to the airport for your flight home. But again, if you want to stay longer, we certainly can make that um, possible for you. Okay, Burgundy and Provence. Um, this is in 2025. So everything prior I've talked about for 2024, but we do have one for a wonderful time to go to Southern France, September 14th to the 21st, a starting price from just $47.99 per person. I have sailed this itinerary probably four times, I think. Um, and it is one of my very favorites. Um, it's kind of like a child. I shouldn't have a favorite, but I do. Um, I love Southern France. And this picture right here is Avignon. And Avignon is so picturesque. And we're going to talk about her as we get to the end of um, this presentation because she's one of our last stops. So um, do know that, again, this is for 2025. Um, and it is sailing the SS Catherine. And the SS Catherine is very Southern France. When I think of like Southern France, I think of lavender fields and wonderful wine and very whimsical. Um, and this certainly is, the ship is a gorgeous ship. She holds a few more than some of our other ships at 159 guests and 57 staff. Um, and she has a wide range of staterooms for you to choose from. So um, she also has, you see that lady down there, she's got a swimming pool on her. And so um, that's really quite neat to bring your bathing suit and enjoy our swimming pool right on our Uniworld ship. So we have got seven nights cruising, 19 meals, 10 excursions, and four UNESCO World Heritage Sites. So this will begin in Lyon and end in Arles. Um, so again, we will meet you on day one at the Lyon airport and uh, transfer you to our ship where you can get on board and unpack. Day two is a uh, Lyon. And Lyon, I would say, is for foodies. Anybody who loves um, food will love Lyon, especially French gastronomy. Um, and I think that's 
when we're off walking, um, Leon, you're going to see the wonderful restaurants. Uh, we go into a little market where there's some great chefs and stuff. Um, and I would say this is a great opportunity for you to grab lunch on your own this day at your expense um, because it's it's really um some of the best of French food out there. So you will have a choice uh, in Lyon to do our Lyon panoramic tour or to do the Silk Weavers walking tour, or there's even the Lyon uh, bike tour that you can do. And I've not done the bike tour, but I've done the other two, the Silk Weavers and uh, the panoramic to, uh, tour. Both are really, um, really great tours to choose from. Um, it gets you around the city of Lyon, uh, kind of where the, the areas are of most interest for guests to enjoy. Um, and I think that uh, you will really love day two, especially if you're a food like me. <laughs> so day three is Bone. And um, Bone is known um, for its highly prized wine. So I think anything in France, um, uh, all tours, I think of wine and French wines. Um, but um, Bone is definitely known for its prized wine. And it's medieval era um, hospital. Um, and it is a smaller town where you'll get to visit this hospital um, and then free time on your own to explore, shop, grab a meal. Um, it is a um, truly a French quintessential town, if you will. But this hospital really is um, kind of the peak of interest for most guests when they go into Bonne. Um, it is, you think about medieval era hospital. And so we're, 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 we're way back in history of, you know, taking care of patients and stuff and what that looked like. And um, they have wonderful displays there and walk you through um, the hospital, etc. And so um, it's a neat thing to explore definitely on day three. Uh, tour on uh, Tan Le Hermitage, <laughs> it's hard for me to say. Um, and uh, this is the village of Tyrion and Ten La Hermitage. <laughs> You'd think after all these sailings I've done there, I would have learned how to pronounce that better, but I have not yet. Um, and this really is a wine lover's visit um, to two villages. Um, and we'll do a little stroll with wine tasting. Um, of course, there is a Let's Go uh, Vineyard hike with wine tasting, if you'd like to do that. So it's a hike and not a bike ride, because we would never want to put you on a bike after doing wine tasting. Um, but it is a lovely little area where you're going to enjoy um, the houses um, and the shopping and, air, and uh, the 14th century uh, church and um, the oldest secondary school in all of France. Day five is Vivier. And Vivier, um, Vivier is a lovely French town on the Rhone River. We walk our way around the town and visit the 12th century St. Vincent's Cathedral. And it, it is the smallest cathedral in all of France. And we have a wonderful little surprise there in the cathedral for you. And then what we do is we break out into groups um, and we'll kind of break you out before we even disembark um, uh, the ship. Um, we'll break you into groups. So you'll go with your local guide and follow them um, after the church visit um, to kind of some special little excursions. So some of our groups might go into a local villager's home. Another might go to a little pottery shop and learn pottery. Um, there's many things that we do. So I don't want to spoil it for you. But just know it's a really neat day to just see a smaller, quainter uh, little city on this um, on the river of Rome. Day six is Avignon. And Avignon truly is um, fascinating. Um, this is um, the wa uh, walled city of Avignon. It once housed the Pope's palace, and it's a chance for you to visit a 2,000-year-old Roman aqueduct. And when we go into the Pope's palace, what you need to know about this is that the Pope's palace at one point 
was moved to Avignon. And it was kind of for some of those rebellious popes um, that moved it there for a very short period of time. But you get to walk through it and see this palace. Um, and what is so neat is um, just before this bridge, you don't see it in this picture, our ship is docked right there. And you literally get off the ship and cross two or three lanes of traffic um, and walk right into this walled city uh, in all of its glory. It is a opportunity, a day that you won't soon forget. Um, we have also got um, the aqueduct, um, which you can uh, go and visit. It's a 2000 year old, a 2000 year old Roman aqueduct. And there is a masterpiece tour, which is a kayak ride um, on, uh, on the Gardone River. So that is an option. There is also another masterpiece tour, uh, which is a cooking class. And I've not done it myself, but I have heard that this cooking class is one of the top um, uh, excursions that our guests have done we keep it to a very very small group of, of people so when i talk masterpiece tours those are additional in in cost um, from our included tours so do know that and then day seven we are in arles and this is a very french provincial town uh with shops art shops it's um it's known to have inspired uh, Van Gogh, including the Starry Night over Rhone um, picture that he had done um, and um, had painted over 200 paintings there. So um, it's a very well-known um, little town of Arles um, and many, uh, many Roman ruins to include the Roman theater that is still standing. So we'll go and visit these, these ruins um, of the Roman theater. And it's in remarkably good condition. When I saw it, I was like, wow, you can just envision um, this, uh, this uh, theater being uh, used back in the days, right? So it's a wonderful uh, day for Arles and um, getting into just another quaint quintessential a uh, little town in France. And day eight, we will disembark our ship and head home. Or if you want, you can stay longer um, uh, in Southern France. Uh, you can go to Monte Carlo. That's what I did when I was done. Uh, Cannes, uh, there's many opportunities for you to extend your vacation, obviously. John, that was a lot to cover today, but I think I did it. How did I do? Lots of questions? I, I, I thought you did good. We didn't have a lot of questions. At least oh, we have great. a lot of questions so far. Um, <laughs> you know, uh, I I have one that I was going to talk about. We'll see if any other questions come in. But no, I thought okay. you did a fantastic job. Um, All right. There's a lot to cover. As I mentioned, um, we're, we recorded this. So when... Um, when you got the invitation, there should have been information on there on all these groups. So we'll include that when we send out um, the email with the presentation as well. So as I mentioned, we have websites for all of these. Um, so let's say, for example, that if you're interested in Danube Holiday Markets, when you get the presentation, um, there will be a link in it where you can actually go to the website. We have multiple pages. You can read a summary. You can look at... Uh, the ship, you can see the accommodations on the ship. There are kind of photos of the different accommodations, you know, the grand suite, the suite, the balconies, the classic rooms. Um, you can see what cabins are still available, what the pricing for those is, the day-to-day -day itinerary, uh, kind of lists the description and lists what those uh, complimentary excursions are. Um, as Nicole mentioned, the, the shore excursions are included. So you can see a lot of days you'll have a choice of what you do. Uh, and then there's a page that includes all the inclusions. Um, we did have questions about singles, and uh, I'm going to let uh, Nicole talk about Uniworld in its entirety on singles and, and you know, special reduced single supplement dates. But to kind of talk uh, more specifically about the signature groups, um, the single supplement on the signature groups or the Burgundy Provence, which is the cruise for the cause, uh, is 200% for singles. Um, which is, if those of you are singles know, that's kind of the industry standard for both ocean cruises and river cruises that single supplements are 200%. But if you recall way back, and I probably should have talked about it when I said it, when we were looking at the uh, deck plan um, for the June 2nd Paris and Normandy cruise, I said that we had four and a half staterooms available, and I'd talk about that more. 
Um, the half stateroom that we have available is through a program we have, which is a single share program. And the way that would work is on any of the signature groups, um, if you wanted to go as a single, um, we would book you as a single in a stateroom at the double occupancy rate. So there would be no single supplement. So for example, for Paris and Normandy, if you recall, the classic room was uh, $5,099, $50.99. Um, a normal single room rate would be twice that. But if you wanted to do the single share, we would put you in that stateroom for half that rate. And then if we found another MOA member who wanted to go on the cruise, uh, we would put them in that stateroom with you. Uh, we do basically have two of those on each sailing. So one for male members and one for female members. So on that June 2nd sailing, we actually have a single MOA member in that stateroom. If I remember correctly, it's stateroom 208. Um, and so if another single MOA member wanted to go on that cruise, he would have a choice. He could either room with that existing MOA member and pay just the double rate, or he could pay the 200% single supplement and go in a room on his own. Um, so if you were a female, because the question came from a female MOA member, if, if you wanted to go on the Danube holiday markets, I would have to check, but I don't think we currently have a single female uh, in a single share room on that cruise. So we would put you, you would select a stateroom and we would put you in that stateroom and you wouldn't pay any single supplement. But if there was another single MOA member who wanted to go, who was also a female, then they we would put them in the stateroom with you. So if you have any questions on that, you can drop us an email or give us a call. But I think that's pretty straightforward on how that works. Um, of course, uh, we would... I'll give you the numbers and the email addresses or whatever. So you can obviously meet uh, the person that you were sharing with in advance. I can tell you that we started doing this back in 2019 when we did our very first signature group. Um, and it's been a fantastic success. We have people, the very first signature group we did was the 75th anniversary of the D-Day landings in Normandy. So it was actually with Uniworld. It was the same Paris and Normandy cruise, still the highest rated cruise we've ever done. Um, but we had pe people, mem MOA members who met on that cruise and sailed together, who had such a wonderful time. They have continued to sail together, not only on future signature groups, but on other groups or on other sailing. So it's an opportunity to meet someone um, who loves to travel, uh, who is um, looking not to avoid that 200% single supplement. Uh, Nicole, did you want to talk at all about um, the reduced single supplement sailings or how that would work sure. outside of the signature groups? Yeah, so outside of the signature groups, um, we will, um, throughout the year, put some dates and itineraries where we either reduce or waive single supplements. So it is not every single sailing, um, every itinerary. Um, it's kind of where we look and say, do we have more availability here where we can go ahead and reduce or um, waive single supplements? So we will do that um, throughout the year on occasion. Again, it's not everything. Otherwise you do pay the 200% as John mentioned. So um, I like right now, I think we have some single rates um, for uh, departures through June of this year. We don't put them out too far in advance, um, but we do have some select dates and itineraries where we've done that already for this year's for sailing. Yeah, so so once again, the reason we kind of end on this screen uh, is uh, if you were interested in that, uh, either give us a call or drop us an email and kind of let us know uh, what you're kind of looking for. Um, and then they, you know, for example, you could say, I, I, I want to go on the Duro River and they could come back to you and say, you know, well, for the Duro River in 2024, they only have one sailing with the reduced su single right. supplement. Or if you said you wanted to do, you know, you know, the Danube, you know, a romantic rhyme, just pick one that itinerary name I know you want to do like a romantic rhyme, they could come back and say, we have this state with no single supplement and this state with wave sub single supplement. Right. But, but as Nicole said, you're probably not going to see any, and I'd be surprised. I can't remember the last time I looked at the list that there probably aren't any 2025 departures that they have the reduced or the wave single supplements uh, out yet. It, it's no. more of a kind of a last minute program. Correct. Okay. All righty. Uh, no All other right. questions, which is great. 
Um, as I said, uh, we're going to get this email out to everyone, um, which will include the links to all the uh, all the different uh, signature groups. Uh, we'll include a copy of the video. We hope we can join you on one of them, if not more than one. There is no limit on the number of signature groups that you attend. Uh, so feel free to uh, go to on. I'm on all of them. <laughs> I'm on all of them, exactly. Uh, but no, they really are. Uh, they're unbelievable events. It's it's difficult yes. to explain what it's like to get on a ship, and every single person on that ship is part of MOA. Um, it really is, you know, wherever you are. Um, it's a very fun group. If you've hung out with uh, uh, fellow MOA members before, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, a very outgoing, fun, um, friendly group. And everywhere you go, you'll be on a bus and you'll you'll be friends with the people you haven't met yet next year at dinner, yes. at the cocktail receptions, you know, all the things that are available. So um, absolutely, if the, the schedule works with you, um, absolutely. And then for those of you who get our newsletter, I think everybody should have. Um, a lot of people replied. Um, we always are looking for suggestions for 2026. We have 2025 set. 2025 um, will actually be one ocean cruise, one tour, and then one river cruise. So this Burgundy Provence is your only river cruise opportunity for all of 2025. Uh, for 2026, we don't even we haven't even we've got a lot of suggestions, but we don't know what we're doing yet. So without uh, kind of dragging on as I can talk forever, I'm going to go ahead and uh, end it here. Uh, I want to thank everybody for attending. Remember, you can bring your friends and family along. And I'm going to turn it over to Nicole for the final word. Nicole, take us away. All right. Thanks so much, John. And thanks to everybody for joining me today. I hope um, you we piqued some interest here in some vacation options for you this year. Now is the time to get yourself booked. I mean, I really wouldn't wait much uh, longer. Um, we are filling up on all of these trips and We'd love to see you on one, if not all of them. So thank you there so you much go. for your time and uh, have a great evening. Thanks, everyone. We'll talk to you again soon. Bye.